So first thing I want to emphasize is this top thing right up here is um, I do not do specific homework question type help on weekends unless it's something that I can directly answer in a quick short email. Um, I do not even look at email on my home PC. Um, I don't do any uh, schoolwork on my home PC. So unless I can do it on my phone, which does not have Google Classroom on it, so I can't pull up the extra documents and stuff like that, those, those questions won't get answered until Monday mornings. Okay. If you're going to ask a question, make sure you come to the, one of the office hours on Friday um, or any other day during the week um, to get the questions answered before the weekend so you don't have any issues there. Another reminder, if you are going to show me in class, make that comment in the assignment and actually turn in the assignment. And then what, I, what I'll do is I won't put missing for a homework grade there. I'll just, I'll leave a blanket, Tyler Sis, that cues me in that you're going to be showing me in class. I do not accept show me in class for any quizzes. I actually grade your quizzes for accuracy. So I need actual pictures. Make sure when you're turning in those pictures that I can see your work for all of the problems. Next, the warm up questions. The first one asks, what is the domain of the function? And as a reminder from Algebra 1, the domain is your input values. Okay, the output values are our range. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what are my possible x's that I can that I put into this function. So the way I figure out the domain is I pretend like I have a flashlight shining. So if I have the graph below the x-axis, I have a flashlight shining up and if I'm above the ax axis I've got a flashlight shining down and I figure out which region of the x-axis is going to be shaded um, when the flashlight shines on there so it's going to be shaded between negative 4 and 4 so the domain for this one is negative 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4 um, this question was not asked, but if I would have asked you what the range is, pretend like you have flashlights shining from the left or right of your graph and figure out where the shade would be on the y-axis. So from the y-axis, I would be going from negative 3, which is down here, up to positive 3. So my range would be negative 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to three. Um, you can write it in the inequality notation, or we can use our interval notation here, where the square bracket represents the equal sign. So the four and negative four represent those things. If it's got a square bracket, it means it's equal. If I just put parentheses, that means it doesn't actually touch. So the interval notation for the second one would be three comma three in square brackets. <coughs> the second one, a diagonal of a rectangle measures nine meters. So anytime I have a picture, I have a word problem that describes something that can be easily drawn in a picture, I draw it and I label it. I have a rectangle, so I know all my angles are right angles. The diagonal is nine meters. The width of the rectangle is six meters. And it wants me to calculate the length of the rectangle. Well, I can calculate this because that diagonal gives me a um, right triangle. And from a right triangle, I know that the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. And if I want to solve for L, I'm going to move the 6 squared to the other side. So I get L squared is equal to 9 squared minus 6 squared. 
which is 81 minus 36. If I take the square root, that gives me L. 81 minus 36 is 45. So I need to know what the square root of 45 is. Well, square root of 45 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Square root of 9 is 3. Root 5 doesn't simplify. And you have meters. Now, if you would have typed in this or the square root of 45 into the calculators that I provided when you guys picked up your stuff at school, it would have given you the 3 root 5. And if I have units to start with, make sure you give me units in your answer. Of course, they had units because it was multiple choice. And the last one, for some reason, it gave me a black box on this picture. So I'm going to delete it and write it down. Delete. So what I want to know is which expression is equivalent to 6 to the A times 6 to the B. Okay, it, with A and B being integers. In middle school and Algebra 1, you were taught that if you have the same base with a multiplication problem, what you do is you add the exponents. So this one would be 6 to the A plus B. And if you forget what the rule is, make up a problem for yourself. I'm going to say A is 2, B is 3, and then let's come up with how I can do this. Well, that would be 6 squared times 6 to the third, which I know I can write as 6 times 6 for the 6 squared, and then 3 more 6s for the 6 cubed, and I realize that I have 5 of them. And which mathematical operation that I can do with 2 and 3 that gives me 5? That's addition, and that's a way that I can come up with that rule on my own if I forget it. Are there any questions on the warm-ups? Do I need to explain them anymore? If so, type your questions in chat. Okay, I'll head back over to the board. Nobody gave me any burning questions, so I'm not going to do any. So we're going to skip that one and that one. And we're going to come up with our next method of solving linear systems. Remember, for the purposes of our class, a linear system is two um, linear equations that we are trying to find out where they cross. Today, we are going to solve by substitution. Last week, we solved by graphing. So the general guidelines is we want to pick an easy equation. So we're going to be given two equations. Pick an easy, I'm going to put that in quotes, equation. That you can solve for one of the variables without getting fractions. Now you can solve for one that's going to give, end up giving you fractions when you solve for one of the variables, but it's just going to make the substitution step a lot harder. The next thing that you want to do is you want to substitute the result. I'm going to call this step A. Of step A into the other equation. What this is going to do is it's going to get rid of one of the variables in your second equation. So this gets rid of one variable 
in the second equation. C, we are going to solve for the remaining variable. Because the only thing you should have left right now is numbers. You mean? So we're solving that second equation. Then step D, we're going to use the results of step C. to solve for the last variable in our first equation. And this step is called back substitution. So we're going to pick an easy equation, easy being in quotes, solve that equation for one of the variables so I don't have fractions, substitute the results of that first equation into the second equation to get rid of one of the variables, solve that second equation for the remaining variable, and that's going to give me a number, take that number, put it back into the first equation, and that's going to give me a second number. I put those two numbers together, that is going to give me the point where the graphs would cross. So, okay, so this worked earlier. Um, the pictures were able to show up earlier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the pictures and actually write out the problems. I am doing some even problems from your homework 106 worksheet that are not assigned to you. So I tried to type in the stuff and it's giving me big black boxes right now. So first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do problem number four. The directions for four, five, and six say, tell which equation you would use to isolate a variable. Then explain your reasoning. Your reasoning should be because it's gonna end up not giving me fractions, okay? So the first equation I have, x equals 8y minus 3. The second equation I have is 3x minus 4y equals 1. I, I need to pick one equation and solve it for one of the variables. I don't actually have to solve it. I just need to tell you for these ones which equation I want to use. Well, I'm going to use this top equation. Why? It is already solved for a variable. It is already solved for a variable. So I don't have to do any work. That, that's already done. So again, four, five, and six, you're just telling me why or which equation you would use and why. So six. I start out with 9 minus 3x equals y. I have 3x minus y equals negative 2. And I'm going to pick both equations here. I'm going to do the answer for one of them. So I could pick the top equation for the same reason. This one's already solved for y. Now, if you notice the second equation, if you were to solve this second equation for y, you also would not end up with fractions. So this one I could solve for y. And the reason is no fractions. Now, my preference would be the one that I don't have to do any work with, and that would be the one that was already solved for y. So like I said, you want to pick the easy one. So on problem five, you are going to have to um, just tell me which one you would use. And it should be one of the answers I already have on the board. Nothing popping up over there. 
So now just to work some examples and get you working on homework and turning some other stuff in. Delete. We're gonna make us a black pin. Problem eight. Now we're actually gonna solve systems of equations. I have four X plus three Y equals zero. I have two X plus Y equals negative two. So my first step was to pick an easy equation that I can solve for a variable and then solve it for the variable. I am going to pick the second equation and solve it for Y. Anytime I have a variable whose leading coefficient is one or negative one, that is a very good choice for the equation to use in solving for that variable. So if I solve this equation for Y, I get Y equals negative two X minus two. So my next thing I wanna do is I want to substitute into the other equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy down the top equation and everywhere there's a Y, I am going to put parentheses. So I'm gonna copy the top equation and everywhere there's a Y, I'm gonna put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm gonna put what Y is equal to. So Y is equal to negative two X minus two. Now what I wanna do is solve for X. So to solve for X, my first step is gonna be distribute. Three times negative two X is a negative six X. Three times negative two is negative six. I'm gonna combine like terms. 4x minus 6x is negative 2x. I'm going to move the 6 to the right-hand side. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And I'm done with that step. Now what I want to do is I want to take this answer and I want to back substitute. I'm going to take this negative three and I'm going to put it into what I got with that first step there. So everywhere there's an X, I'm going to put parentheses. So I get Y equals negative two parentheses minus two. Inside the parentheses, I put a negative three. Negative two times negative three is a positive six and six minus two is four. Now the way we're gonna represent our final answer is as a point, and we, a point is a set, an ordered pair of coordinates inside a set of parentheses. I put the X coordinate first, and I put the Y coordinate second. Now, if you wanted to verify that you actually got the correct answer, you would put the X in for X and the, the the negative three in for X, the four in for Y, and either, actually both equations, and you should get true sentences. For example, four times negative three is negative 12. Three times four is 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is zero. Two times negative three is negative six. Negative six plus four is negative two, and negative two is in fact equal to negative two. So you can go back and actually check your work on these. I uh, know um, we'll talk about that. Um, yes, I will do number two. Uh, the person that asked for me to do number two, was that on the, uh, the practice, the homework for today, the 106?
6.2. Yep, I'll do number two. Number two. So let's unselect this. Um, the reason why I didn't do two is you're going to, uh, when I read the directions and actually do it, you're going to go, oh. Directions, solve for the indicated variable. I need to solve for y. That means to get the y by itself on one side of the equation. Well, to get the y by itself, I need to move the x's to the other side by adding them. I mean, by subtracting them. I got to get rid of the negative four. That means divide everything here by negative four. And there's your answer for two. Um, so I did eight. The next one I want to do is number 14. And I'm going to mark a couple more people present that popped in late. That one's here. So those that are late, make sure you do the warm up questions also. Um, and I will type this one in, homework. And last person, and check to see if they did the warm up. Nope. So, um, the next one I wanted to do is number 14. Um, I did not do 10 or 12 because the, you're going to be solving for y with the ones that have the coefficients for negative 1 in both of those. So those are almost identical to the same work I did on problem number 8. That's why I'm not doing it. Problem number 14. 5x plus 2y equals 43. And my second equation is negative 6x plus 3y equals negative 30. As a general rule of thumb, the easiest variable to solve for is going to have the smallest coefficient. Okay? The smallest coefficient in this first group is 2. And then I want to check to see if I divide everything by 2, am I going to get fractions? Yes, I'm going to end up with 5 halves and then 43 halves. So I don't want to use the first equation. Let's look at the second equation. The smallest coefficient is 3. If I divide everything by 3, am I going to get fractions? And in this case, no, I'm not going to get fractions. So I am going to pick the second equation and I am going to solve it for y. So two steps. First thing is to move the x's to the right. That gives me 3y equals 6x minus 30. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3. That gives me y equals 2x minus 10. I take this result and I substitute it into the other equation. So to do this substitution step, I'm going to copy the first equation on the board, except everywhere there's a y, I'm going to put parentheses. So 5x plus 2y equals 43. Inside the parentheses, I am going to put what y is equal to. And now I'm going to solve for the remaining variable, which is x. So I get 5x. Distribute plus 4x minus 20 equals 43. Combine like terms, 9x minus 20 is 43. Add the 20 to both sides, 9x equals 63. Divide by 9, and I get x is 7. I am going to take this 7 and substitute it into the start equation. So I'm going to copy the start equation, and everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses. So I get y equals 2 parentheses minus 10. Inside the parentheses, I am going to put the 7. 
I distribute or just multiply. And then 14 minus 10 is four. Now I know what X is, I know what Y is, I can write my final answer. Final answer is the point seven comma four. Uh, so the ones that ask, do I post these videos? I have to strip off your pictures from the right hand side and then the link will be provided in um, Google Classroom. And then yes, um, they gave you the video link in uh, the video channel in chat. But the best way is you'll see in Google Classroom the actual link to the actual video you wanna see. Or if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get notifications when I post videos, but then you'll get notifications from uh, all of my classes, or you could subscribe to the playlist, and then that one would just give you the ones for this class. So that was problem 14. I'm going to do 16. And 16's the oddball out of this group so far. And the reason why it's an oddball is there is no really easy equation in this pair, okay? There is no way, I, if I divide by three, I get fractions. If I divide by two, I get fractions. If I divide by five, I get fractions. I divide by nine, I get fractions. So what I wanna do is I wanna pick, to me, the one that's gonna give me the easiest fractions, and to me, halves are fairly easy. So I'm gonna solve this first equation for y, okay? So we're gonna come up with other tools later this week and next week that's gonna let me not have to deal with fractions. But for now, I'm going to solve this equation for y. And it's, one, it's gonna be two steps. I'm gonna move the three x to the other side by subtracting it. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by two. If you have not had me for a math class before, we leave everything as fractions. We do not put things in as decimals. You need a fraction calculator. Your calculator that I gave you is one, and Desmos is also a fraction calculator. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute this y into the second equation. So like I've been saying over and over again, when I get ready to do the substitution step, I copy the previous equation except for what I'm gonna substitute for, and then I put parentheses there. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation, except where there's a y, I am gonna put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I am gonna put what y is equal to, and that is negative three halves x plus five halves. So I now need to solve for x. First thing I'm gonna do is distribute. I get five x, negative nine times negative three is positive 27 halves x. Negative nine times five is negative 45 halves equals negative four. So most of you do not like dealing with fractions. Once I get to this step, I can get rid of fractions. What I can do is I can multiply everything in here by two, and that's gonna get rid of my fractions temporarily. We may end up with a fraction for an answer. So if I go two times five X, I get 10 X. Two times 27 halves is 27 X. Two times negative 45 halves is negative 45 and two times negative four is negative eight. If I take 10 plus 27, I get 37. Add the 45 to both sides, I get the, um, 37. Divide both sides by 37, I get one. I am now gonna take this one and substitute it back into that first equation. So everywhere there's an X, I'm gonna put parentheses. 
Inside the parentheses, I'm putting a one. This simplifies to negative three halves plus five halves, which is two halves, which is one. Final answer, the point one, one. Um, do you guys want me to do 18? 18 is going to be really easy to solve for X. Do I need to do 18 as another example, or is that enough practice, uh, examples for you? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording. If you need more help,